Good evening. As promised, welcome to Alan's tech channel, if you will, or playlist, I should say. So, today is the first of a series in a playlist that I'm going to be doing around home PC upgrades and repairs, and hopefully to give layman's terms instructions to people who are perhaps not technically minded and just want a basic understanding of how computers work, what the components are, and try and give you a layman's terms. This is basically aimed at novices, um, but other people may find this useful as well. So what I have in front of me here is the laptop, um, which is an upgrade basically, and I had already taken this apart uh, as discussed in the last video uh, on Alan's allotment and I had already disassembled this so this is the first in a series of swapping out the motherboard and then changing it and upgrading this machine and reassembly. I'll go over the various components what they are in layman's terms uh, try to keep this as simple as possible. I also have a number of components already removed from this laptop. This is the battery. This is one of the covers that covers the hard disk drive and the memory. This is the keyboard. These have already, as I said, been removed from the machine previously. And this is the top plate that goes back on together with all the various holes for to connect all the ribbons and connect all the connectors back up to this machine. And that's just the reverse side of it. And this here is a trackpad basically in layman's terms and that's the mouse with a little minuscule ribbon that comes up and through the top and that has to connect back to the motherboard that little connector and we'll try to get you yeah, as good a possible picture as we can when we come to do this reassembly now as I said earlier this is an upgrade so this particular laptop had reached it was still working but it had reached the end of life as upgradeability goes these days and there wasn't a lot more I could do for it it was a bit sluggish and um, so I decided we would upgrade the motherboard. <clears throat> I'm just having a little look now. Uh, let's get my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. Yeah, right. I thought I'd made a boo-boo there and ordered the wrong part, but I haven't. In this particular machine, it's what we call an upside down motherboard. And this is the motherboard. Basically, this is the main function of the machine. This is the um, main board. So what I'll try to do here now is break this down into components for you. So basically, you have a cooling fan here, which blows the cold air out of this fin. And this is the pipe that goes back to this, which acts as a cooler. And this here, is what's called a heatsink. Basically, it's, it, it gets really hot. And underneath there is the CPU, which is basically central processing unit. And in layman's terms, that is the brain of the machine. And the, bra the brain sends information to the memory and vice versa. And they communicate with each other, which then communicate with this interface here, which is called a SATA port, which you ex uh, put your external drive, your internal hard disk in there, which is where Windows or Linux or Mac operating system or whatever operating system you so desire is stored on the drive. So if you imagine the drive is extended onto there, that is your Windows operating system on that disk, which is just removable that feeds information through to the brain, from the brain, uh, sorry, to the memory, and from the memory to the brain and back. 
like this. In a nutshell, that's in sim simplistic forms. Obviously the other components play a part as well. We've got a graphics chip here, which is the basically, this is what handles the graphics for your video output. This is a little battery and that retains all the information on here when there's no power to it. It's like the time and date and the BIOS settings etc. So what we're going to do is uh, drop the camera down. This could turn into quite a lengthy video so and a lot of these will be. So if it's not your cup of tea feel free to browse, free, feel free to browse away if it's something you would really like to learn. And I want to, as I say, try to make this as simple as possible so that anyone can pretty much diagnose uh, problems with their own machine or even do replacements or upgrades if that's something you would so desire. So I'm going to get prepared and I'm going to set up the camera on a different angle now so you can actually watch me take out the motherboard from the, uh, the machine and replace it with this one to upgrade the machine. Right, hopefully uh, this isn't exactly a recording studio, but it's all I have to work with, guys. So, basically, this particular machine, if you can see this, it's branded in E machines. E four four two, and it's a rebranded Acer laptop. Basically, the motherboards, I believe, were manufactured all by Acer. This is a typical case of an Acer 15.6 laptop. and But it's rebranded and rebadged as e-machines. And so this motherboard that's existing in here to start with is branded as an e-machines. Sorry, you can't actually see me on the camera, but... Let's keep it going. And this one here is an Acer motherboard. But they're identical in every way, except this is an upgraded board with different memory and a better brain. But the actual cutout of the board is identical in every way that it will fit in this case. So that's what we're about to do now. We're about to swap it over. And when I was saying earlier about this being what we call an upside down board, the reason I thought I'd ordered the wrong board in the first place is because when we mount this in here, this basically, as you can see, will be flipped over to match the profile of the existing board, which means that the brain is on the underside. So we call it an upside down motherboard. So to spare you the pain, I've basically disconnected all the little connectors and they go onto these ports here. Now, I will try to zoom in after I edit the video just to see, so you can see things from a better perspective. But basically this is the SATA connector that goes to the DVD-ROM um, that goes in here. So what I want to do is just decipher these and take them out. You can see I've already no, I haven't with this one. So basically I'm just going to move the little clip forward. That just slides that way. And that will let this complete adapter come away. And these are the USB ports. And that's the board. So that's a USB controller board. I'll pop that to one side. Now, as I say, I've removed most of these. This one here... It basically slides back but you have to be very very careful with this and there's two little plastic lugs on each end of this prong and it's suggested you get hold of that don't try and tug it by the ribbon or you'll snap it and what this does is it inserts into the slot in the motherboard and this hooks the screen to the motherboard for video display if you just tug at this wire this thin wire here you'll snap that connector off and it, the machine is useless after that. But you could actually replace it, but that's just another cost. So what we've got here now is I've already, as I said, disassembled this mostly. But what I did do at one point was to just put the hard disk back in here. 
as a temporary test. And now I just need to remove it again by sliding it out. And basically that's the hard disk drive. And this is a, an SSD, solid state drive, that's what it stands for. And these are much faster than the mechanical drives. I put that back in for purposes only for my reasoning. We've got some memory to remove out of here when we get the board up, turned upside down, but I can take it out here if I wished. And this is the wireless card for Wi-Fi with two wires attached. So we'll just, we'll just pull those two wires off. That's the wireless card detached. We'll slide the little clips to one side. It has a protective film over these. And we'll lift out the memory modules. And you can see the groove inside there. It can only go one way, according to the slot in the motherboard. Again, there's a little silver tab on there. And on this side, you just pull them that way and that way. That lets you fall forward and you lift out the memory module. That's pretty much all we need to do on the underside for now. We've taken out the battery, all of the screws in this case, and we've taken off the hard drive and the cover. We turned it over. After all the screws were removed, we were then able to um, lift off the top which is basically this bit here but because these ribbons come through that top or up and underneath it we have to take or detach when we took the lid up we have to be very careful and detach as we're lifting the lid as you'll see when we reassemble so basically well that's it we've got it apart so what we can do now is just proceed to remove this motherboard completely. And there's also a little connector here. So they're so small and tiny you can easily miss them. And this is for the speakers internal of this machine. So what we've got left with now, because I've already removed most of the screws, is just this one here. Holding this in place. We'll put that carefully to one side. I have that wired out of my way so that I can see what I'm doing. And that should now lift up as you see. Now I think there is two screws that holds the fan down. So we need to remove those as well because the fan comes with, with the motherboard. And, the, and you've got to take particular note with the screws because they're all different sizes except for the bottom screws which are all the same size but when you're doing the internals the screws are actually different sizes so we've got two there like medium and the first one that we took out is a, a bit smaller so there's actually three in here just need to move these wires out of the way from the battery compartment there's actually another screw just here as well at the back of the fan. So there's one at the back, one in the top, and one at the side. If you try to just pull the board without removing them, obviously you're going to destroy the board. As it is, this has reached end of life as far as I'm concerned, and I know it's a working board. It's no use to me anymore. So lifting this side, we will just gently ease the machine and sometimes you just need to peel this plastic back a little bit as well and check to see if there's something holding it from the underside I'm not seeing anything so it's up and then up towards the screen and basically that will let it come away so we can lift it up and try to do this so you can actually see on the camera and here if you can see 
we have the power that powers the, all of this motherboard. So we just need to remove that by getting all of the plastic tabs. Sorry, I'm blocking you. We just need to get all of the little plastic tabs and pull that connector off the motherboard. Out with the old. And in with the new. Hopefully. Right, so the first thing we will obviously need to do is do everything in reverse now. So we need to make sure we get our connector fitted back on there for the power. Careful you don't scratch your screen whilst you're doing this. And you, it's a little bit on the tight side. They're very, very short cables these. And it's not the perfect light. I'm working with a little LED light here. So there's the power reconnected. And then you've got to manipulate this with the lead connected. And you don't have a lot to play on these, as I say. And then we line things back up. And the theory is we just slot it in. Manipulating the cables where they need to go. Lining things up with the socket. And making sure that it's clicked in to sit you where it should go. And what we need to happen is that they sit in there perfectly so we can get this screw back in here. And that lines up nicely. So we'll get that pin down first. And that's pretty firm. And as you can see, as I said, the um, the layout of these boards, although the plastics might be a different colour on the connectors, the board fits perfectly into here. So we'll start reassembling all the little fiddly wires. This is basically what runs from a uh, runs the speakers on the motherboard so we'll just get that connected which just goes up here on this little white connector and it basically just plugs in like that and there we have it and then it tucks down these little plastic lugs down here out of the way and keep it flat so now we'll get the three and screws back in right sorry about that guys I had to uh, pause the camera and knock it off while I got to the bottom of what was causing this fun not to sit square and it transpires that these were still in the fan and when this was being taken out of the old machine, the donor machine this screw was embedded into there and they were actually still inside this hole on this fan and the plastic, bits of plastic were keeping the fan up off the ground so I had to actually take the fan off and disc uh, take the board out again and disconnect the cable to the fan take the fan out completely to get at this with a pair of pliers on the bottom to hold that while I unscrewed it and got it removed. So we'll get back to where we were. Back under where it should be. This is our ribbon cable to the screen. So we can at this point reinsert this now. Be very careful that you don't bend the pins as you reinsert. I 
and that's that connected. Now we'll take the audio cable, wrap it back around where it should be, and we'll reconnect the audio before I forget, which goes in there. Right. So at this point, that's pretty much the new mother motherboard is fixed in place. So now we want to put the USB cable back into this motherboard. The little two clips, we just slide them forward. Be careful you don't force them. If that pops out, basically it's damaged. So you have to be careful. We slide the little pins, metal pins, in here. At the same time, manoeuvring the clip, because when you're pushing it in, it can actually push the little clip back in and lock it before you've got it fully inserted. So now that that's fully inserted, we can hold it in place while we just clip back down. I'm oh, sorry, you can't see. While well, I just press these little clips back down and give it a little, a little gentle tug, and we can see that it's firmly fixed. We we'll stick that back down there, and we we'll put this back into the ports on the case where they were. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is put the DVD drive, uh, DVD drive connector, which is a mini SATA on the short length of cable. The metal pins obviously have to correspond with the connectors, but it, they're basically key coding. You know which way up. That has to go that way. So technically the pins on this one, shiny side up. Um, yeah. Again, slide the little connectors forward. Insert the ribbon. Trying to do this so you can actually see what I'm doing. You may have to keep manoeuvring those pins, little clips, until you get it all the way in. Once it's in, squeeze the clips. Little tuck to make sure it's tight. And sit it into its housing where it goes. like so. So we've got our USB port put back, we've got the mini SATA port put back and we've got the video cable to the screen put back and we've got the internal speakers, this little cable here, plugged back in. And technically that's it. So what I've noticed is this hinge has came a bit loose on this side, but when we reassemble and all the bottom screws come in, they will tighten all of that back up again. <coughs> Excuse me. New motherboard in, old one out. The other thing when you're dealing with anything like this, you should use anti -tip. I'm having some accidents today. Use some more room. I've got that much on this table, <laughs> I can hardly move. You should use anti-static precautions. Um, I've never personally done it, and uh, so far, whether I've just got lucky, I don't know. But the obvious goes, if you've been playing with balloons, <laughs> which are full of static, I wouldn't advise you to start doing this after you've been playing with some kids' balloons or something, something of that effect, or that extreme. Now on this here, you'll see... This is the ribbon for this power button. So when we're putting this back, and we've also got one here for the mouse pad, the tracking pad. So when we're putting this back, we've also got one, another one here for the speakers. So as we're reassembling this, we need to make sure we're connecting those cables up at the same time. We'll put the lid back on. We've got the tricky one, you just clip the case in place to hold things now. And we've got this tricky one 
back on. I remember there's a little clip on there. We can help to manipulate that one in there. And then put those in there. That's that one connected. Now we'll put the secondary audio. Can be a little bit tricky this. A pair of tweezers is probably the job for these. However, I've always done it this way. I probably should get myself. Oh, I've got a pair of tweezers somewhere. Just can't lay my hands on them. But you can manipulate them with the uh, tools that you do have. Just a little trick here. There we go. Where well, there's a will, there's a way. In. And now all that's left to connect up is the power cord onto the motherboard. Uh, the power switch. Again, there's a little plastic tab on there, it's a fine art of getting it between the plastic and making sure that the contacts go in. There we go. That one can be a little bit tricky as well. And then we're just going to push the little plastic tabs back down with the screwdriver. Like that. And then just gently check it that it's fastened. What we don't want to do is reassemble all of this, only to find out it doesn't work. So it's at this point, we're going to test the machine and see if it will power up. Right, so we've got a, a power supply plugged in. This is our power supply. And this is the moment of truth. So we're going to add power to the machine and see if we can get any life out of the machine. Got a power light on down here. Just need to see something on the screen and there it is. Obviously it's going to fail. It's going to fail because it can't find the keyboard, mouse, hard drive or anything yet. But before I put it all back together, I wanted to make sure it was working. So now you should be able to just hold the button down and it should power off. There we go. So now we know it works, I can go ahead now and continue on reassembling this machine. Click things back into place. Basically what I'm doing now, we're going to slide the hard disk drive back into place, into the interface, and a little plastic strap on here that you can use to slide it. And then we've got some screws to fasten this down. There we 
go. These were to get held are actually in um, the cover. So the screws that comes through these holes in the cover which goes into there and holds the hard drive as well. So at this point what I'm going to do now is flip it over. So these are the, um, these are the Wi-Fi card wires that we need to connect up to this. Now put the back one on that pin, and the white one on that pin. I found it doesn't really matter which way around you do these two ways, um, but if you put them back as they were, you, know, you can't go wrong. They're only signal wires basically. Tuck them back into where they want to go, make sure they're firmly fastened. We put an extra stick of memory in there, we fitted the hard drive now. So technically, we can put this cover back on as well. these two screws and these will go right through through the hard drive mounting as well hold the case on and cover the memory and the disc Looking at the to lift it back out, and that's a little lock to stop the battery falling out. Basically, still got the CD ROM to put in here, which I'll have to put back in because I took this out to do a modification on this with a secondary hard drive into a CD ROM caddy. So you could actually put a secondary drive in there instead of putting the DVD writer back. But we're going to put the DVD writer back in there. We're not going to have this with two drives, this one. So I'll dig that out later and we'll fit that as well. And there's just one screw in there to hold that. So we should now flip it back over and have something like almost an assembled laptop. Again, double check your ribbons because once you clip this back in, you're pretty much done. So, ribbons are all connected. We haven't missed any. This one here is for the keyboard itself, but we have some screws that now need to go back Now the keyboard. These can sometimes be tricky. So you basically have a ribbon here. And we've got to attach that to that by holding it up. Attach it. Make sure it's secure. And then we can slide the keyboard in here which has. I don't know if you can see this. There's little lugs on there. Which go into the grooves in there to hold it in and line it up. So what I usually do is lay it down flat. Being careful to fold the ribbon over like this. Again use a screwdriver just to pull the clip, little slider clip forward and slide in the keyboard connector. Just make sure it's all the way up and then slide the little clip from each side like so so that it nips up nice and tight and just a little gentle tug on the keyboard ribbon to make sure it's tight and before I actually push this in and clip it in because this is the hardest part to get out believe it or not I want to test that the keyboard works so we'll just leave it laying like that I don't know if there's any charge in the battery or not but we'll soon find out 
F2 to enter into setup and as you can see it did so the keyboard is responding yeah the keyboard is responding so we know it's connected correctly we'll power it back down press and hold it that's the power off now we can proceed to finally fit the keyboard put all the little lugs into the relevant slots line it up and clip it back in to place and there we have a repaired laptop and upgraded you see it comes up branded here sir on the label it says e-machines but the technically rebadged aces and um, this has now got a core i5 brain in it as opposed to a little dual core in fact i think it was even single core um, brain it only had uh, two gigabytes of memory it's now got eight and uh, once we put the drive in there and get windows on we'll put windows 10 and 11 on here and we'll show you a little trick in the next video how we do that right I might have been a little bit drawn out there guys um, it's difficult to try a video and do an intricate job like this I'll try and condense it down so that it isn't where some things didn't go quite right we'll try and chop the video so it all looks how it was meant to look in the first place um, but hopefully that's given a brief description on how I mean this is this one is a more technical technically advanced video ironically that's how I've started the channel just because I happen to have this to hand and I don't know when I'm going to do the next one so I've done this one now if you watch some of the more basic videos around computers um, repairs and upgrades you can maybe fall back to this when you feel comfortable um, it's certainly not beyond anyone to do this and as long as things are explained in layman's terms so that you understand it from a very basic concept anyone can basically do this and save themselves a small fortune right so i hope you enjoyed this video and as i said if it was too technical for you follow some of the simpler ones to come and then you can roll back to what this one if you ever have a need thanks for watching please stay safe be practical and keep yourselves out of harm's way thanks again for watching i'll see you again in the next episode